good morning students today we are going to see part 2 of chapter number <coughs> sorry part 2 of chapter chapter number 2 the shehnai of bismillah khan now first of all let me give you a brief introduction of uh, what this chapter want to say us okay the lesson is about ustad bismillah khan he was a renowned shehnai player in india he is legend because he did something which has historical significance he played the shehnai on the day india got independence that is 15th august 1947 At the date fought before the Prime Minister of India, Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, gave his speech. Before that, Bismillah Khan played the Sehnai in order to signify some something auspicious. Something auspicious for the whole country was about to happen. That is, India was about to get freedom, and so on. <clears throat> that occasion, Bismillah Khan played the Sehnai, and so he is a legend. Now let us understand your chapter. Okay. Emperor Aurangzeb bent playing the bent the playing of musical instrument called pungi in royal residence, for it had a shrill and unpleasant sound. Bent bent का मतलब है prohibited, shrill, very sharp, unpleasant, something that you dislike. Now understand. Pungi was a musical instrument, the preceder of the Sehnai. Preceder means one step before. When the Mughals ruled India, before the Britishers came, there was a very famous Mughal ruler named Aurangzeb. He did not allow pungi be played in his royal residence because he felt that it had shrill, unpleasant sound. Pungi became the generic name for everyday noise makers. Now, what do you mean by generic name? A name given to a class or a or a group as a whole, and generic name means the scientific name or a broad classification of something. Reeded, reeded means reeded instruments. हवा से जो हम लोग play करते हैं वो which have reeds like flute, the clarinet, etc. So any musical instrument which is made with reeds like we have flutes, clarinets, they all are classified as pungi. So pungi is a broad term. for any type of instrument which uses wind to produce sound few had few had thought that it would one day be revived now the world things brought back to life as aurang zeb has banned all these reeded noise makers he had banned pungi in his royal residence no one thought that one day such noise makers such instruments which made unpleasant sound would be played and their sound will would be liked by audience okay now next a barber of family of professional musicians who had access who had access to royal palace decided to improve the tonal quality of the pung now tonal quality means sound as the pung had an unpleasant sound there was a barber who belonged to a family of professional musician and he wanted to play the pung but he knew that sound produced by pung was unpleasant and so he decided to improve the sound he chose a pipe with natural hollow stem that was longer and broader then the pungi and made even seven holes on the body of the pipe holo holo means empty from inside so this barber took a pipe a pipe which was which was a hollow stem it was longer and broader than pungi he made seven holes on body of the pipe if you have seen a flute it is something like this it is a pipe which is hollow from inside and has holes on it when he played on it closing and opening some of these holes soft and melodious sounds were produced so then he blew air into the pipe and closed and opened different holes he found that soft and melodious sounds were produced when he did like this next he played the instrument before everyone sorry before royalty and everyone 
was was impressed means when the barber played this instrument in royal court everyone liked the sound produced by it the instrument so different from punki had to be given a new name so the royal court thought that this instrument was different from punki and so it should have a different name also <coughs> Now, as the story goes, since it was first played in the Shah's chamber and was played by a nai, nai means barber. The instrument was named the shehnai. Now, there is a story behind the name for the instrument. This instrument was played <coughs> played for the first time in royal residence of Shah. Shah was a name given to king. Mughals called the king as Shah. As the nai, that is the Indian term used for barber, had played it for the first time. They called it Shehnai. So the first part is She, which stands for Shah, and the second part is Nai, and that is Barbal. So this instrument was named Shehnai. Now you can see the image. This is Pungi, and this is Shehnai. The sound of Shehnai began to be considered as auspicious. Auspicious means good. Okay, the sound which was produced by Shehnai was considered to be a good omen, and so it was played on good occasion. And for this reason, it is still played in temples, and it is an indispensable <coughs> component of any North Indian wedding. Indispensable means without which a piece of work cannot be done. Something which is very necessary. You can hear shehnai being played at many temples and a wedding also. <coughs> in the past, the shehnai was a part of Nawab or traditional ensemble. of nine instruments found at the royal courts now ensembles means what so pronounced usko na ensembles nahi bolte hain usko bolte hain ensemble things here instruments considered as a group okay so ensemble bolte hain ensemble kabhi bhi pronounce mat karna the shehnai was part of nawab nawab is an urdu word and it means traditional assemble ensemble or ensemble that means a traditional group of nine musical instruments these nine musical instruments were played at royal court and shehnai was also a part of nawab then till recently it was used only in temples and weddings the credit for bringing this instrument to the classical stage goes to ustad bismillah khan so shehnai was played at king's court temples and at weddings it was used on stage in the performance credit for that goes to ustad bismillah khan who was a legendary shehnai player and people wanted to hear him <coughs> play the shehnai there is a five year old bismillah khan played gilli danda near a pond in ancient <coughs> estate of dumrao in bihar so when bismillah khan was 5 years old he lived in an old estate named dumrao in present day bihar estate he used to play gilli danda an old sport quite similar to our cricket he would regularly go to nearby bihar ji temple to sing the bhojpuri chaita and at the end which he would earn a big ladu weighing 1.5 kg oh sorry 1.25 kg a prize given by local maharaja ladu or ladu are spear shaped sweets originated in indian subcontinent also now understand also he would go to the nearby bihar ji temple although bismillah khan was a muslim he would go to temple and he would sing song Chaitya in Bhojpuri language. Bhojpuri language is spoken in area of Bihar. When he would finish reciting the song, he would get a big ladu as reward, and the weight of that ladu was 1.25 kg. This was a prize given to Bismillah Khan by local Maharaj for singing the Chaitya. <coughs> This happened 80 years ago and little boy has traveled far to earn the highest civilian award in India the Bharat Ratna The writer says that this incident occurred when Bismillah Khan was 5 years old that he would get his ladu as reward and after 80 years <coughs> Bismillah Khan earned the highest civilian award the Bharat Ratna so this is the distance that he has traveled in his life At five years of age, he would get 1.25 kg ladu as a reward, and at 80, he achieved the highest civilian award in India, that is the Bharat Ratna, like Sachin Tendulkar also achieved. 
Born on 21 March 1916, Bismillah belongs to a well-known family of musician from Bihar. So Bismillah Khan was born on 20 Mar 21st March 1916 in a family of musician in Bihar. His grandfather Rasul Bax Khan was the Shehnai Nawaz of Bhojpur's King's Court. <coughs> His father, Paygambar Bax, and other parental ancestors were also great Shehnai players. Now, what do you mean by parental ancestors? That is the ancestors of father, Bap, Dada, Vosam. The lineage of his father's side was full of great Shehnai players. We can say that Bismillah Khan ji acquired the skill of playing the Shehnai from his ancestors. वो ऐसा बोलते हैं ना खून में ही है ऐसा सो हिज ग्रैंड फादर वॉज अ ग्रेट शहनाई प्लेयर ही प्लेड द शहनाई इन कोर्ट ऑफ भोजपुर किंग हिज फादर एंड ऑल पेरेंटल एंसेस्टर्स वर ऑल्सो द ग्रेट शहनाई प्लेयर्स नेक्स्ट पैराग्राफ द यंग बॉय टू टू म्यूजिक अर्ली इन लाइफ means bismillah khan ji also started learning music at an early age just like evelyn glenny at the age of 3 when his mother took him to his maternal uncle's house banaras now varanasi bismillah was fascinated watching his uncle's practice the sehnai now baap dada ke khandan mein bhi the aur nana wale khandan mein bhi the so when bismillah khan ji was just 3 years old his mother took him to her parents house to his maternal uncles maternal uncle mean the lineage of one's mother side they lived in banaras banaras is today called varanasi and when bismillah khan saw his maternal uncle play the shehnai he was attracted towards it and he also wanted to learn playing it Soon Bismillah started accompanying his uncle Ali Bakhsh to the Vishnu temple of Banaras where Bakhsh was employed to play the Shehnai Bismillah Khan started going with his uncle Ali Bakhsh to the Vishnu temple in Banaras Ali Bakhsh was on the duty to play the Shehnai at Vishnu temple of Banaras Ali Bakhsh would play the Shehnai and Bismillah would sit captivated for hours on and now what do you mean by captivated captivated means attracted and on and means for very long time without stopping continuously when bismillah khan saw his uncle ali bax played the shehnai he would get attracted towards it that he would sit there for hours listening to him play the shehnai slowly he started getting lessons in the in playing the instrument and would sit practicing throughout the day gradually bismillah khan also started learning playing sorry started learning playing the shehnai and he would practice throughout the day he never got tired he was so captivated by the shehnai <coughs> captivated again attracted for years to come For years to come, the temple of Balaji and Mangla Maya and the banks of Ganga became the young apprentice's favorite haunts where he could practice in solitude. Apprentice, apprentice का मतलब होता है trainee. Haunt, haunt means place you like come where you like to visit many times a day. Solitude, solitude means being alone, solo. So for many years, Ustad Bismillah Khan remained in Banaras. He would visit the temple of Balaji temp Balaji. temple of mangla maya and would remain on the bank of river ganga where he would practice playing the shehnai all by himself the flowing waters of ganga inspired him to improvise and invert ragas that were earlier considered to beyond the range of shehnai so here we come to know about the talent of ustad bismillah khan he was so inspired and motivated by river ganga it provoked him to improve his performance and he also invented many rags ragas that were considered impossible to produce by shehnai ustad bismillah khan worked hard and invented different sounds with shehnai at the age of 14 bismillah accompanied his uncle to allahabad music conference so when bismillah khan was 14 years of age he accompanied his maternal uncle ali bax to allahabad music conference at the end of recital ustad fayaz khan patted young boy's back and said work hard and you shall make it 
So recital, recital here means performance. Ustad Fayyaz Khan, he was a renowned classical vocalist, okay, was impressed by his work by his performance and said that if he would work hard like that he would make a name in the field of music okay <clears throat> with the opening of all india radio in lucknow in 1938 came bismillah's big break he soon become an often heard sahnai player on radio so when the all india radio started it's radio station at Lucknow, Ustad Bismillah Khan started performing from there. Often his Sahnai performance would be on air. When India gained independence on 15th August 1947, Bismillah Khan became the first Indian to greet the nation with his Sahnai. So Ustad Bismillah Khan was the first Indian to greet the entire nation through his Sahnai. He played the Sahnai from Red Fort on this memorable occasion. He poured his out, sorry, he poured his heart out in Rag Kafi from the Red Fort to an audience which include Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, who later gave his famous Christ with Destiny speech. So the Rag that was played by Ustad Bismillah Khan on that occasion on the independence of India was Rag Kafi. He played it from the Red Fort. After his performance, the first Prime Minister of India, that is Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, gave his famous speech. Christ with destiny. Bismillah Khan has given many memorable performances both in India and abroad. His first trip abroad was to Afghanistan where the King Zahir Shah, where King Zahir Shah was so taken in the maestro that he gifted him priceless Persian carpets and other souvenirs. Now, taken in, taken in by, मतलब क्या होता है? Attracted or charmed by. Souvenirs, उसका मतलब क्या है? Things given in memory of place or a person or event. Bismillah Khan gave many performances in India and abroad. Some of them are memorable like the one at Afghanistan. The king of Afghanistan, King Zahir Shah, really liked Bismillah Khan's performance. And he gifted him many things which were made in Afghanistan like Persian carpets, etc. So that Ustad Bismillah Khan would remember his first visit abroad that was so that was to Afghanistan. <coughs> Next, the king of Afghanistan was not the was not the only one to be fascinated by with Bismillah's music. Film director Vijay Bhatt was so impressed after hearing Bismillah play at the festival that he named a film after the instrument called Gunj Uthi Shehnai. There were many other people also who were attracted to his Shehnai's music. Gunj Uthi Shehnai was the name of a Hindi movie. It was made by Vijay Bhatt. He was a film director and he really liked the sound of Shehnai played by Bismillah Khan and that is why he named his movie Gunjuti Shehnai. The film was hit and one of one of Bismillah Khan's composition, Dil Ka Khilona Hai Toot Gaya, turned out to be a nationwide chart buster. Now, what do you mean by chart buster? Record breaker. There was a song in movie Gunjuti Shehnai named Dil Ka Khilona Hai Toot Gaya, it was composed by Ustad Bismillah Khan and became a chart buster which broke, sorry, which broke all the records. <clears throat> Despite this huge success in the celluloid world, Bismillah Khan's venture in film music were limited to two. <clears throat> Vijay Bird's Gunjuti Shehnai and, and Vikram Srivina, Sri, Srinivas Kannad venture Sandhai Apanna. <clears throat> So, celluloid means old-fashioned way of referring to films. Venture, venture means project that often involves risk, something which has lot of risk. Although this song was a chart buster, Bismillah Khan got lot of success in this film, but he composed music for only two films. The name of movies were Gunjati Shehnai, made by Vijay Bhatt, and Kannad movie, made by Vikram Srinivas, called Sandai Apanna. I just can't come to terms with the artificially and glamour of the film word, he said with emphasis. Emphasis, to lay stress on something. So, Ustad Bismillah Khan would say that he, he did not like the artificial world of films 
and the glamour that was there in the film world. That was why he did not compose music for any other movies. Awards and recognitions came thick and fast. Thick and fast means he got lot of awards and was recognized at many places. <coughs> Bismillah Khan became the first Indian to be invited to perform at prestigious Lincoln Center Hall in United States of America. He also took part in the World Exposition in Montreal, in the Keynes Art Festival and in the Osaka Trade Fair. So Bismillah Khanji performed all over the world. He performed in United States of America at the Lincoln Center Hall. He performed in Montreal, Australia, Australia in the World Exposition. He performed at Keynes Art Festival and he also performed in Japan at Osaka Trade Fair. <clears throat> so well known did he become internationally that an auditorium in Tehran was named after him Tahar Mosque Ustad Bismillah Khan. Tehran is located in Iran. Bismillah Khan was so famous all over the world that in Tehran an auditorium has been named after him. <clears throat> Now, national awards like Padma Shri, Padma Bhushan and the Padma Bhushan were conferred on him. Conferred means given, usually an award or degree. Ustad Bismillah Khan has been awarded with this national award. In 2001, Ustad Bismillah Khan was awarded India's highest civilian award, the Bharat Ratna, with the covered, sorry, with the coveted award resting on his chest and all his eyes glinting with rare happiness, he said, all I would like to say is teach your children music. This is Hindustan's richest tradition. Even the West is now coming to learn our music. Coveted, coveted means much desired. When Ustad Bismillah Khan received India's highest civilian award, Bharat Ratna, in the year 2001, his eyes were shining. He was very happy because his hard work had been recognized and he gave an important message to the country. He told all the Indians to teach music to their children because music is the richest tradi tradition of India. He said even the Western countries wanted to learn India's music. <coughs> In spite of having travelled all over the world, Khan Saab, as he is fondly called, is exceedingly fond of Banaras and Dumrao and they remain for him the most wonderful towns of the world. Although Ustad Bismillah Khanji had travelled all over the world, he was given so much respect and recognition, he remained rooted. Benares where he learned music and Dumrao where he was born and brought up were the two most wonderful towns of the world for him. He was so down to earth that although he had travelled all the, over the world, still he was attached to his birthplace. <coughs> a student a student in USA and the student pro and the student, sorry, a student of his once wanted him to head a Sehnai school in USA and the student promised to re recreate the atmosphere of Banaras by replicating the temples there. But Khan Sahab asked him if he would re he, he would able to transport River Ganga as well. <clears throat> so replicating means making a copy of something. There was something, there was a student of Ustad Bismillah Khan and he wanted that Ustad Bismillah Khan should set up a Sehnai school in USA. He promised that he would recreate the temple of Benares in America for Ustadji as he, were, he would miss it. Now Ustad Bismillah Khan was attracted to River Ganga also. So he asked his student that would he transport the River Ganga also to America. So he wanted to say that he could not leave India. He was attached not only to the temple of Manaras but also to the holy river Ganga. Later he is remembered to have said, that is why whenever I am in foreign country I keep yearning to see Hindustan. While in Mumbai I think of only Banaras and the holy Ganga and while in ban Banaras I miss the unique Matha of Dumrao. Yearning, yearning means longing or having a desire of something. Ustad Bismillah Khan said that whenever he visit any foreign country, he longed to see India. He wanted to return to India and then 
he says that when he was in india in mumbai he yearned to visit banaras and the ganga river and when he was in banaras he missed the birthplace of dumrao and matha where he was saying chaitya was rewarded with the laddu of 1.25 kg weight by the maharaja <coughs> next Ustad Bismillah Khan sorry Ustad Bismillah Khan's life is a perfect example of rich culture heritage of India one that effortlessly accepts that a devout muslim like him can very naturally play the shehnai every morning at Kashi Vishwanath temple devout devout matlab kya hota hai believing strongly in religion and obeying its law and following practices so Here the writer says that Ustad Bismillah Khan was a perfect example of rich cultural heritage of India. His work was beyond the religion barriers. Although he was strict Muslim, he followed Muslim laws. But every morning he would play the shehnai at Kashi Vishwanath Temple, which was a Hindu temple. This shows that he did not have the barriers of religion in his mind. He was a true Indian. He considered music to be India's richest cultural heritage. Ustad Bismillah Khan passed away on 21st August 2006 at the age of 90 after a prolonged illness. He was given a state funeral and government of India declared one day of national mourning. Ustad Bismillah Khan had been ill for a long time and he died on 21st August at the age of 90. The entire country mourned the death of the legendary musician. There was a holiday for one day and he was given a state funeral. So that's the end of our chapter. Sound of music part 2.